from the get-go, a lot of us, myself included, on the committee, we pictured the tar plant being located at the Tucson airport area, where the heart of the pollution was, right, you know, right a stone's throw from where the most polluted wells were. The well at Sunnyside School, the well at Elvira, or Elvado, um, and where the, the heart of the plume was, most of the, and we wanted to go with one central plant. And there was only one logical location, and that was that area on the end of the runway, south of Valencia, north of Medina Road, east uh, with uh, Nogales Highway and the railroad tracks on the west side and Park Avenue on the east side. And there was a big desert area there next to the, uh, I guess the Martin Re Reservoir is the name of Martin Reservoir. And it was a perfect location and it, and it could handle, like I say, they called it a central plant and it could handle from the Air National Guard pollution and it could even handle the uh, pollution from Plume B and it could handle West Cap and a Tucson, uh, our Texas instrument, that area with one plant. And of course, Hughes had already started their own construction south of Los Reales. So the Tucson airport area was basically on the south was bordered by Los Reales, on the north, Ajo, Ajo Way, and on the east country club was Country Club, and on the west boundary of the area was Santa Cruz River. So the heart of the plume was right there at the airport. And I always, and several of us, other people assumed that the tar plant was going to go right there next to Martin Reservoir. Because one another reason was uh, having a, a safety, a public safety buffer zone around the plant was an important consideration due to chemicals and the TCE evaporating into the air. Because that's what the, the tar plant did is it sprinkled the water at the top of the towers down through a medium of little balls and then they had a fan blowing air up to evaporate the TCE to evaporate it and clean the water. That's how they operated. And there was a potential for TCE going into the atmosphere. And what made that area ideal, in my mind, was the fact that a couple years earlier, they had blocked off Medina Road on where it went, where it connected with Park Avenue on the end of the runway around that Martin Reservoir. And that eliminated about 90% of the traffic through the area. And then they had, the state of Arizona bought up Sunnyside Schools on the corner of Valencia and Nogales Highway and the administration building, the maintenance shops and the bus shops, and they closed the school. And then on the corner of Valencia and Nogales Highway was the Shell Station and a couple of businesses on Nogales Highway. And then on Valencia, there was Tiny Hitch and Post Cafe and a couple of garages and, and some residences. Well, the state bought up all that land for probably a third to a half mile around that area. And they demolished everything. You know, they, they tore the buildings down and they kind of sanitized that whole area. So it was prime area for the stripping towers. And then when the, Mal the Malcolm Perney consultants uh, announced that they were going to put the tarp plant way up at the north end of the plume where the, where the water was is nearly contaminated and they were going to locate it at uh, what was then called water plant number two the old water plant number two which on the north bordered on the north of by Mission uh, Michigan Street on the south by Irvington on the west by Santa Cruz River and by the freeway on the, the east side. And I asked the guys at Malcolm Pernia, why would they put it there? It's more, you know, it makes more sense to put it at the airport where they could handle one central plant. We called it a central plant, but now it wasn't a central plant. It was way out in the boonies. So now, and they said, well, the city of Tucson was tasked by the e EPA, their task as where, where Hughes and the other pollutants, polluters, responsible parties, as they called them, provided money. The city of Tucson's task or duty 
was to provide the site and maintenance for the, the duration of the cleanup. So the city of Tucson, even though they owned the land at, around Martin Reservoir, at the end of the aircraft uh, runway, they owned that land. They also owned water plant number two. And for some reason, they insisted on the tarp plants going to water plant number two. So that was one of my big regrets is that I didn't raise a bigger stink about putting it at the airport and having a true central plant. Now we have the tarp plant up north on the plume, and now we have the treatment plant at the three hangars, the vapor phase extraction, and we have the cleanup uh, plant at Air National Guard. We've got the cleanup plant over uh, at the nearby at, at the uh, West Cap and Texas Instruments. And all of that could have been handled by one plant, one true central plant located by Martin Reservoir. And the community advisory group that you mentioned, were they meeting with the United States Environmental Protection Agency or government? The EPA was, their task was to facilitate all the responsible parties and the, the city, county, and state uh, entities that were involved in environmental quality and, and the feds. And EPA, persons from the EPA facilitated the meetings. And at first we had the meetings well, every month. We had meetings every month. And the first at, uh, facilitator from the EPA was uh, Dan Opolsky. And he was there maybe five or six years. And then a Craig Cooper did the next five or six years. And then we, uh, around 19... 94 was when they started building the, the TARP plant. And is that, did you ever then become involved in the Unified Community oh, okay. Advisory I Board? Was, you're taking me back to, back on target here. Uh, once we, once the TARP plant went up and took effect in 94 and went online, we kind of figured, those of us on, on the committee, we figured, well, our job's done. You know, we spent from, you know, from 86 through 94 working every month to get the plant going. And once the plant went up and it was online, we thought we were done. And we were ready to call it quits. And the EPA said, no, no, no. During the whole, the, uh, the EPA Superfund requires community participation throughout the whole life of the, the cleanup. So that's when they started the UCAB in 95. They started the community advisor group changed its name to UCAB in 95. So that's the link between community advisory group and UCAB. And I have a question. Uh, did you ever hear about a TC subcommittee that was headed by Lorraine Lee? I, it was one of the, well, the, that was a Tucson environmental uh, coalition okay. and uh, yeah I, I knew Lor Lorraine but they were one of the uh, parties that were involved in the lawsuit in the lawsuit okay and um, can you remember how uh, it seemed like you collaborated a lot with the United States Environmental Protection Agency and then other of the responsible parties as part of this community advisory group which then began became the Unified Community Advisory Board. Is it became correct? UCAB. Today, it's, it's, the group is called UCAB. And it was, it's required to be in existence until it's cleaned up. And getting to the cleanup time, back in the 80s, um, they were, the hydrologists and the, the engineers estimated, they told the community that it would probably take at least 30 years to, to eliminate the TCE contamination down, down to safe levels. Mm -hmm. But off the record, they basically said it would take at least 100 years. That was off the record. And they said, our great-grandchildren will be cleaning this up. And, and it's... And that's kind of proven, proven yeah. to be. Uh, when, when the tar plant first started up, they estimated it would run till 2025, I believe, 30-some uh, years. Okay. 